Okay. Alright, for some of you who may not know, uh, that's the first note to myself to pass on to you all. Uh, the solutions to the homework, to the exercises, to the actual exercises like five, uh, 1520, 1534, I've put those on Blackboard. Okay? So you can go there and look them up and go, oh, okay. And, what's that? What's that? Yeah, the, the, the solutions that are posted are like the ones for the exercise, not for the multiple choice, because you'll eventually get those, hopefully. Um, but, uh, but for the exercises, they're on there. Um, and so some of you go, well, wait a minute. That means if I did nothing, and now all of a sudden I get the homework right, and I tried it, and everything, well, it all works out in the end. Um, so, um, and the, uh, so those are on Blackboard for you. There was something else. No, that's about it. All right, now, what, what we're going to do is kind of review the bidding here just a little bit, get, get some of the big ideas in 15 behind us because we've got to move on to Chapter 16 today. But the first thing we're going to do is some people I had, I didn't finish the discussion on the Gaussian surface, so I'll go ahead and do that real quick, and then um, we'll change. Now, then we'll move on. Okay, now here's the idea behind the Gaussian surface, okay? One thing is, if you've got a bunch of charges, okay, let's say I've got a uh, positive 2Q here, positive 3Q here, charge, this charge, uh, a minus 4Q over here, like that, a uh, minus 6Q over here, like that, and um, a positive 5Q over here, like this. All right, actually, let's make this a positive 6Q. Now, there's a method to my madness here. Why did I change? Um, that doesn't do anything for me. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now, what I want to do is I want to be able to figure out what the electric field is way out here at this point P. I want to find out what the electric field is at this point P. Now then, we know some things. First of all, we know that the forces between all these charges, the forces between two charges, is the force is equal to that K, um, which is the, that constant, that 9.00 times 10 to the ninth thing, or it's 1 over 4 pi times the permittivity of free space, which is 8.89 times 10 to the negative 12th uh, Coulomb squared per meter squared per newton. All right? Um, so, th and this is... Uh, Q1 times Q2. Remember, I just put the magnitudes down here for and the distance between the two. So we know the force. That's one way we compute the force. And we can figure out if we put a charge here of Q1, we can take the total charge here, total charge enclosed, and figure out what the force is right there if I put a charge there. If there's no charge there, it doesn't feel a force. But what is going through there? An electric field. Okay? So, here's what Gauss's law does, is we go, oh, well this is easy, let's just draw a circle around this thing. That's all we do, or, or put it inside a sphere, make it simple, draw some simple um, geometric shape that we can mess with, that I can find the surface area of a sphere real easy. I know the surface area of a sphere, it's 4 pi r squared, okay? And what's the total charge then leaking out of this thing that's going to be uniform all over? What's the total charge? If I take all the charge, all the charge that's inside here, what's it add up to be? Positive 1. So it's just a positive 1Q. And so E, E times A equals Q enclosed, so the Q enclosed, the total charge of the Q enclosed is positive 1, uh, divided by that permittivity of free space, E naught, like that, okay? 
And so to figure out E, I go, oh, well, this is pretty simple. I just think E equals uh, Q enclosed, all the charge enclosed, over A times E naught. Okay? Now, so let's take an example. Let's take something that might even show up on the test. Okay? This can be kind of a tricky question. I'm going to play dirty pool with you. But this might be a question that, that could show up on an exam. Let's Wait, take it. Let's, a yeah. What's under Q enclosed? E0, permittivity of free space. That's that little E0 thing. Okay? All right. Now, here's a, here's a potential test question. Okay? And this is hard. This is a hard question. If, if we didn't go over in class, you'd be like, I right, quit. All right, so let's let's do this. But if we, but once we, whoops, sorry, Kenyon, I didn't mean to throw things at you there. But anyway, let's do really this. We got, um, we say a charge, um, okay, two spherical shells have a common center. Okay, so let's take two spherical shells, one, two, with a common center. Okay, now then, um. A negative 1.6 times 3 negative 6 charge is spread uniformly over the center. So this has a negative charge spread uniformly here. So the Q inside here, so the Q inside is equal to negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. All right. And let's go ahead and take a... Uh, Let's go ahead and do this. Let's say we take a charge of 5.1. So now we're going to take a charge of 5.1 and spread it all over the outside of this shell because that's the way charges behave. They spread themselves uniformly. And the Q on the outside is equal to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. All right. Now then, keeping what you did in mind over here, all right, and I got to draw two more things. <laughs> She's not going to be seeing all the that she will. Okay. All right. Now, get my cap over here. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, then. okay. Let's draw two uh, radii here. We got the smaller radii. Uh, Okay, okay, it has a 0 0.015 meters. This guy is 0 0.015, so R1 is equal to 0 0.05 meters, and R2 is equal to point, uh, th and this will be R2, is equal to um, 0.15 meters. All right, let's ask three questions here. There's three questions, and this is this is actually um, you. I could even throw this question legitimately on a physics 460 test when they're first learning about electricity and magnetism too, and while well, you're deriving all the stuff. Because if you understand this, you understand Gauss's law, and you understand chapter 15 almost completely, except for the force part. We're not going to have a force here. What is what's the electric field at a point? At uh, point zero 0.05, at a distance of, what is E? At a point of uh, point zero 0.035 meters from the center. So a distance right here. What's the electric field right here at this point P1? What would it be? That's a gimme. What's the electric field inside any conducting surface? Zero, yes. It's going to be zero. Okay? It's going to be zero. All right? Now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got negative charge here. You told us that a negative charge looks like this. A negative charge, the electric field looks like this, coming all over. Yes, I did. This is a true statement. However, however, what's going on? 
if this guy has an electric field pushing in like coming out like this, so does this guy. And what do they do? They push against each other. And so if you add up all those guys pushing against each other, it wipes them all out. Okay? They, in other words, this guy opposes this guy completely. So those guys go away. This guy opposes this guy completely. So it goes so mathematically you can go through and you can show that okay, so P one, so this one equals zero. Now what about an E field? What is E if we come out to a point at point zero seven five meters? This is a little bit trickier. At point zero seven five meters. That's right here. P2. Let's put P2 right here. Okay? So here's what we do. Here's how we do Gauss's law to solve this problem. We go, oh, Let's draw a sphere around this point, like this, and we look at the, and we go, okay, E is equal to Q enclosed, enclosed, divided by A times echo naught, all right? All right. First of all, how much, what's the enclosed charge inside inside this sphere right here. What's the enclosed charge? What's inside it? Yeah, this guy. The, the Q inside. That's what's enclosed. So this electric field would equal, and it would be radially inward because it's, it's, all co it's coming towards this guy. <laughs> okay? It's coming towards this guy from this artificial line that we've drawn here. It's coming towards him because of this positive charge right here is coming this way, all right? So we're just figuring that guy, he's coming inside to us, and so we would go, oh, we'd say negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by, now this kind of works out kind of cool, because A, the surface area of a sphere, is 4 pi r squared, okay? So we go, 4 pi times the 0 0.075 squared. But look what happens. Times E naught. What's 4 pi times E naught? In the denominator. What's 1 over 4 pi times E naught? It's good old K. Right? That's our K. It's showing up again. So this and this multiplied together forms our K. So this is equals K times negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs divided by 0 0.075 squared, which now that looks oh, cool. So why did I put E? Oh, I didn't. That's from something earlier. Okay. There we go. So that looks like, hey, that's our good old electric field at a distance away from a charge, right? The electric field away from the charge that we that was in chapter 15, which is equal to k times the q over r squared. There we go. All right. Now, last thing. Let's take a look at r. Th Let's take a look at what would be the e field. Let's erase this part. Professor yeah. Where, where, where? Right here? Right here? Yeah, what is that? Next to the Oh, that's a negative six. Next to the Q. One over. One over? Uh, uh, the left. <laughs> to the left? Oh, negative 1.6. No, no, no. Q oh, Q enclosed. I'm sorry. It's Q enclosed. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, Q, E, and C is what, you, is what you see in physics books. I'm sorry. And I don't think you have physics. It does in your hint. Did you notice that when you went to your hint on the last problem of your homework? You went to the hint for how much the, I can't even know, oh, the thundercloud had, it said Q enclosed. E equals Q enclosed over echo naught. E A equals Q enclosed over echo naught. Okay, now, <laughs> now, that, now that you got me oriented, good. Now, here we go. Our th now, let's figure out what E is at a point. What's E at a point? Oh, let's take it at point two meters. Out here, at 0.2 meters. All right, 
All right, well, let's take a look at what the charge is in close. So we got E equals um, uh, Q enclosed divided by echo naught times A or A times echo naught. Okay, now for this guy, let's draw let's draw our Gaussian surface around this guy. What's the Q enclosed out here? What's that? Ah, oh, and somebody else added to it. Minus the Q inside, right, exactly. In other words, it's 5.1 plus negative 1.6. You take the total charge. So you got 5.1 uh, plus the negative 1.6, and what do you wind up with? Positive 3.5, I think, times 10 to the negative 6. So the Q enclosed here is, is equal to positive 3.5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And then the E field then would just be uh, Q enclosed because we're using the sphere and it comes out nice so we get that 4 pi. Uh, we get 4 pi times our echo knot. We can use our K so it comes out nicely. So we get E equals K times Q enclosed divided by the 0.2 squared. Okay. So that was a long way to go, well, about 10 minutes worth, of, um, but explaining Gauss's law, and it sums up everything we, we learned for the most part in chapter 15 about electric fields and how they work and all that stuff. Now we're ready to learn about potentials, uh, differences, and put electric potential energy. And I'm going to let the slideshow do the talking here. Um, one other thing, one other thing, before I go any further, before I go any further, there was on your problem, I think it was problem 10, exercise 10, it, you might have thought, well, what does that have to do with the prices of tea in China? That, um, that's an old phrase, um, anyway. It's my grandmother's phrase, I think, or something. Uh, you give me a mass of a, of a charged particle, and you, give, you say that it's between two parallel plates, and it goes shooting across, and you want to know how far it went in 0.8 seconds in the X direction. You all remember that problem? Did that give you problems? Did it give you okay, all right. It gave everybody fits. We're going to continue on. Then, then it gave everybody fits. All right, so here we go. Here's, here's the idea behind that problem. Okay. Let's say I've got a, 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 a particle. Okay. And here's, here's one side of the plate is plus, 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 plus. All right. Here's the other side. is going to be negative, 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 negative. Let's say the particle has a mass of um, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 7 kilograms. It's not a very big thing. All right? And the E field between this, in this region, the electric field that is in this region, E is equal to 10 newtons per coulomb. Okay? And it said... And the particle also has a charge, let's say a particle has a charge Q that is equal to, oh, it's, a, it's positively charged, let's say, uh, I don't care, let's say 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. All right. Okay, so that's a pretty big charge. All right. Now, here's what it says. Here's what it says. If I have this particle over here, now here's here's a big thing from chapter 15. So let's get this. If I have this particle over here and I let it go, what's it going to do? It's going to it's going to take off this way, right? It's going to take off to your right, my left. It's going to shoot that way because it's going. Hey, I'm a positive, you know, because the E field, electric field, is like eHarmony.com, right? What it's trying to do is marry up all these positive charges with all these negative charges. Okay, and so these positive goes. Oh, I'm free man. I'm going over the negative charges. All right, so it goes taken off that way. 
why does he why does anything move? What makes anything move? It feels a force, right? You're not going to move unless you feel a force of some sort, so it feels a force. Okay, so it goes taken off. Now, where do we get that force? The force is equal to Q, his Q, times the electric field. Aha! Now, yeah. in, in first semester physics, what did we learn a force also equals? Mass times acceleration, right? Da 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 da. Equals MA. Oh, so now I know his acceleration inside here because A is equal to QE over M. Great. All right, now, what would be a real bear to figure out is does Coulombs, Newtons per Coulomb divided by mass, does that equal an acceleration? Sure it does. Because this is Newtons per Coulomb, so this is times Coulomb, so I've got Newtons over mass. Hey, that's a force over mass. That's an acceleration. Okay. All right. So, there we go. And then it says, okay, let's say, how far, what's its x direction in t equals 0.7 seconds? I don't know. I think yours says 0.8 or something like that. All right. Well, we go, well, shoot. I know this. I know that x, going again, going all the way back to chapter 2 of your physics training so far. Going all the way, we know, oh yeah, x equals x naught plus v naught times t plus one half a t squared. Hey, I've got my a, I've got my t squared. These guys are zero because he started at a zero coordinate and his initial velocity was zero. I'm cooking with gas now. I know how far he went. Okay? And his velocity, at the end of that time, is velocity, we know that one too, is equal to A times T. Basically, we take the first derivative of this guy. Don't want to do calculus though. But anyway, we know we've got that formula where we've got V equals V naught plus AT. Oh! Again, where we computed A from all this mess. All right? Okay. Both those are pretty good long test questions, but those would be those would be pretty good. All right. Now, um, let's move on to chapter 16. Oh my. I always forget that you guys where are we here? Where are we? I've only got you for another 25 minutes, don't I? It's terrible. Screen up. That doesn't work. It's already up. Let's go down. There we go. Turn on the projector. Dun, dun, dun. Hey, AVQ on steroids. Have we figured out how to do the computer yet? Or are we just going to film it? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, ch -ch -ch -ch. I wonder if these lights were, oh no, they don't have lights in here. That, that doesn't work. Oh, but this is supposed to work. Projector on. Am I getting any, fl oh, there we go. All right. Now, Tim Yi and, and Hal have tried to get this room somewhat dark. And you guys are completely cut, cut it. Dustin, you're going to learn. You got to get here and get a seat over here. All right. Okay. Now. Let's go to programs. I should have set this up earlier. Boom. All right. File open. Open. Okay. All right. Slideshow. All right. Here we go. There's your $194 textbook. All right. Here's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about electric potential. We're going to be talking about energy. 
Now, one of the first things we're going to do today is we're going to talk about a potential difference, and we're going to talk electric potential, and we're going to talk about electric potential energy. They're two different things. The electric potential energy depends on the electric potential. All right? It's just like, here's the idea. Here's an analogy. Let's take this, let's take this old physics book here, and let's talk about gravity. When I hold it up here at a distance of, of such a height above the surface, I, it has a gravitational potential of g times h. Okay? But to get it from up here to up here, I've got to apply work to it. I've got to move it. And um, I've got to go a force times the distance. I'm going to apply positive work to it. Now, it's got a gravitational, remember your good old GPE, gravitational potential energy, which was mass times gravity times height. We're going to be doing the same thing, except this time, instead of mass times gravity times height, we're going to be looking at charge times voltage. That's your electric potential energy. It boils down to charge times voltage. And um, engineers talk in voltage, physicists talk in potential difference, theorists talk in physical theorists, physics theorists talk in potential difference all the time. But um, it means voltage, okay? And you all are very familiar with the voltage of like a 12 volt battery, okay? It's got potential to do work. Basically, the work it's going to do is it's going to be pushing electrons through a wire so that we get a thing called current, which we'll learn about next semester, or next chapter, not next semester. Okay. All right. And then we're going to learn, and then what we'll learn on Friday, today is Wednesday, right? Yeah, week's flying by because we didn't have class Monday. Uh, we will learn about capacitance. These are capacitors here, which are just like batteries, but it's where we store charge. By the way, all of you who, have a, who has a cell phone, it's got a capacitor in it. That's the way you charge it, okay? In other words, you plug it into a wall, and all these electrons go swimming onto this one pair, the negative plate, okay, which causes a bunch of positive charge on the other plate. Positive, negative, potential difference is a battery. And so that's the way you charge up your battery again. So that's what you're gonna, so you're gonna learn the basics of how a capacitor shows you how things charge up. Because a capacitance means it's capacity to store charge. All right. So there you go. There's chapter 16. Ready for a quiz? No. All right. And, uh, so I got a few, but that's, those are the big ideas behind chapter 16. All right. And we'll just get down to here today. Well, not even there because I took some time with the guy reviewing chapter 15. We're just going to get through electric potential energy and electric potential difference today. All right, here, they're doing the gravity analogy. Okay, so if I start with a, char a positive charge down here, and I, move it, eh, and I move it against the electric field, first of all, it's a positive charge, right? And if I move it from here, from this negative side up here, I've got to apply an external force to it, okay? Because it doesn't want to go. Just like if I want to raise this thing's gravitational potential energy, I've got to apply ex an external force to it. Same thing here. It's not, it doesn't want to go against that electric field. All right? So I'm going to raise it up here. All right? And here's the, here's the uh, potential difference between UB and uh, between the uh, energy between B and A. This is the difference in potential, electric potential energy is equal to that positive charge Q times ED. Well, well, that makes sense because look what happens. E is equal to the force that is the external, and they put that FE in there for external force. The external force divided by Q is going to equal that. No. Oh, that's the, the, the force of the electric field is equal to the force um, that these guys feel on each other. That's right. The force divided by Q is the definition for the electric field. But look what happens. When I multiply that by Q and then multiply it by D, I get force times distance, which is energy, okay? Which is raising its potential. All right. Okay. So here we go. 
So, I raise this thing's potential energy. Yes. All right. Here's a, a further idea here to this thing. Let's say that this is uh, the electric, the uh, potential, the voltage right here is 400 volts, and the voltage down here, this negative thing, is negative 200 volts. 400, negative 200. What's the potential difference? What's the voltage of this capacitor that I have here? 400, negative 200. What's the vo What's the difference between them? 600 or 200? What's the difference between my checking account if I have negative $3 and $10? What is it? It's 13, right? It's not 7. Okay? It's 13. So, if this is positive 400, subtract. 400 minus negative 200 would be minus or minus plus 600. So, the voltage difference here between B and A is positive 600 volts. The voltage difference in between A and B would be negative 600 volts. There you go. Okay. And voltage, here's a quick, quick question. Force. That's a vector or scalar? Forces. You're right. It's a vector. Electric field. Vector or scalar? Electric field. Vector. It's got direction. It's got a magnitude and a direction. Voltage, on the other hand, electric potential, voltage, same thing, is a scalar, okay? And when you get up into higher physics, as Ting Yu and Hao can attest, when you start dealing with, working with potentials, and you're trying to find E fields, it's much easier to work in the scalars. So that's why they, that's why we like to deal with voltage vice, working in E fields and forces, using Coulomb's law and stuff like that. It gets too hard, all right? But if you use nice scalars, just like we found out, um, when we're using kinetic energy and potential energy. By the way, we're going to do some kinetic energy here. All right, so now, just as with the electric field, it's convenient to define a quantity that, okay, the electric po uh, potential, electric potential or the change in voltage is equal to the change in energy divided by the charge. Okay, change in energy divided by the charge. And the, and the unit of the electric potential is um, the volt. And it's in joules per coulomb. Okay. All right. So that is, if I multiply the voltage times Q, what do I get? I get the energy back, right? Okay. All right. <sighs> I thought these slides made sense. Now I don't know. I think it's much easier if I just go to work in some of their examples. Let's do that. All right. So anyway, again, the, the voltage is equal to, uh, this is just another way to say the potential difference is, the further out I get, in other words, if I have an E field, Okay. In other words, you guys kind of did this in lab. If I have an E field, uh, uh, let's say I've got a, uh, oh, let's just say I've got three coulombs of charge. I've got a small lightning bolt of positive charge here. Okay. Now, the further away I get out here to this point P, the further away I get, what happens to the E field? Does it get stronger or weaker or stay the same? What happens to the electric fields I get further away from it? It gets much weaker, especially from a positive charge, okay? So the further away I get away from it, the potential goes down, all right? So the so way out of the point of infinity, my, point, my potential is zero, all right? So anyway, um, and, okay, so here's our E field line coming out here. What would my voltage line look like at this point? I'll tell you. It's going to come down like this. In fact, you all kind of did this in lab, right? Didn't you find the things with the same voltage or zero voltage, right? And you kind of connected that line, and then you drew your E field, which was perpendicular to it, right? Going through it. That's what you're supposed to do, I think, right? Some of you hadn't had lab yet, all right? Or had no idea what you were supposed to do. They didn't explain it correctly. 
They threw a bunch of equations at you, though, didn't they? In your lab manual? They were like, what is this? We haven't even seen this. Okay. Oh, here, here we go. Potential difference. Potential difference. Here, VB minus VA is 200. This one makes sense. Okay. Only changes in the potential can be defined. We have to choose our coordinate system, but that's, we'll get to that. All right. Positive charges when we, when we least, what, we already know this, a positive charge will accelerate towards a region of lower electric potential. Why is that? Because it wants to run off towards the negative charges, and they've got lower potential energy, okay? They've got a lot lower potential energy. Negative charges when released are going to want to run off towards uh, higher potential. That's where it's different from gravity. Gravity, everything goes in one direction. A book, a rock, whatever, a person, they all fall towards the center of the Earth. Okay? But, these, but charges behave depending on how they're charged. All right. Let's look at a few examples here real quick. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. All right. We're going to look at some examples. Now, I'm going to put some equations on the board. I'm going to kind of scrap the, the, the video for here for a minute for like the rest of the time. I don't think we'll get to the quiz today. All right. I already beat you up enough. Okay, now, so you go, where are they? How did I go? Oh, well, uh, come Friday, come Friday. You don't have an orgo test or anything like that Friday, do you? No? Oh, it's in two Fridays. Okay. I, I won't give a quiz that Friday. You can, I'm not going to say anything, but there won't be a quiz that Friday after an orgo test. I usually teach to four people, so. All right. Let's do two examples. First of all, let's write up some of the equations here that we know so far. First equation we learned in this class, the force. Coulomb's, oh man. First equation we learned in this class was force equals K times Q1 times Q2 over the R squared difference between the two. We also learn the electric field is equal to the force divided by some test charge, some Q naught. Or E equals Q naught times E equals the force. Or um, E equals K times, R, times Q over the, all this Q enclosed. I, I, I like that Q enclosed idea. Divided by R squared. So the further out I get away from it, the, it goes down to potential. Now, let's learn what potential energy is. Here we go. QV is equal to the electric potential energy. That is your formula for the electric potential energy. Electric. I'm having trouble spelling it. Potential energy. Okay? Where V... Now, we gave some pretty confusing things there for stuff. But anyway, where V is equal to this. K times the Q enclosed that we're talking about that was there first, basically, divided by R. That's the way you compute the potential, uh, the, the potential difference, okay? Yeah. And V also equals, another way you'll see it is V is equal to E over some distance D, or over delta X, or some distance X, okay? Let's fix this to us, because look, if I take uh, KQ over R, 
and divide it by and divide it by uh, our kq over r squared, which is e, and divide it by uh, a d. Is that, is that right? Oh, screw that up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I gotta look at that again. All right, so now, let's take a look. Yeah, I had it right. Okay, good. No, I don't. Dumbass. All right. This makes sense. E, another way is, is V over D. There we go. And so V equals E D. Yes, that makes sense. So your voltage equals E times D. So I was having trouble with the units because I was going, wait, this is KQ over R squared, now times an R, now it works. Because it's KQ over R is your potential. All right, so what does a problem look like? That's probably more what you're wondering. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. Let's in, well, let's do uh, two quick things here. All right, let's say, let's, let's take a look at the example here. We're going to take modern dental offices, use x-ray machines, okay, for diagnosing hid hidden dental problems. Okay. Uh, page 565. All right, so we're going to look at an x-ray machine. Now, here's how they work. Here's how they work. Kind of very roughly, rough, 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 rough idea, all right, of how they work, all right, um, got a bunch of electrons, so right away he draws positive things, no, you got a bunch of electric, you got a bunch of electrons down here, okay, now what are these electrons going to do, now the potential difference here, the, the voltage difference here is 25,000 volts, okay, so delta V, so, so the potential difference here, delta V between this plate and this plate, I could say this is zero and this is 25,000, or I could say this is at 50,000 and this would be at, all right, this would be at 50,000 and this would be at uh, positive 25,000, or better yet, this would be at positive 15 and this would be at negative 10 type thing, okay? All right, so it's 25,000 volts. Now, here's what we're going to do. Basically, these electrons come flying up here, bang, they bang into this plate. And what they do is then they release these x-rays. All right? So they've got energy when they slam into this thing. We've got to figure out what their energy is going to be. Because they want to go this way, right? It's just like, do you remember when we did this? When I take an object and I drop it, can I figure out its velocity based on its if it starts from zero, based on its energy, we're going to do the exact same thing, okay? In other words, my first question is, this electron, these electrons are free to move. One's going to go, they're going to go from here to here. Are they going to increase their energy or decrease their energy? Their potential energy, let me be specific. They're going to decrease their potential, but what are they going to, if, if potential's decreased, what's increased? Kinetic, so therefore they're going to increase their velocity. They're going to slam into this thing, and that creates a force, of course, and that knocks off these photons that are about one-fifth the energy level of the electron that slams into it. Okay, so here we go. First of all, here's a quiz question. See if you've studied your relativity at all. Ha. Do photons have mass? No. Photons don't have mass. Photons are, are pieces of light. Okay. All right. Anyway, do you guys talk about photons in chemistry? Oh, yeah, a little bit. What? Now you have in PCAM you will. How many of you had PCAM? I'm sure you did in PCAM. All right. Okay, at least you guys did. All right. So anyway, so let's figure this out. Okay, so here's what we've got. We've got an electron. We want to know the electron's going to slam into this thing. And the last thing is, I don't need to know the distance that it's apart. I just need to know the potential difference. Okay, so I've got that. And so I know this, that the electric potential energy, the EP, 
get used to this notation, the electric potential energy that it's going to lose is going to equal Q times V, or delta V, in this case, delta V. Q times delta V. What's the charge of an electron? Negative 1.6. Negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times 25,000 volts times 25,000 volts. So actually, you all might, have, might be more used to this. That is uh, an electron volt, basically, is that energy level. It's an EV. You all have seen those before, electron volts? That's what this is. This is one EV. One electron volt, because one charge of an electron times its voltage, electron volt. Okay, it's one. All right, and um, but it's very very small in joules. Its energy level then is negative four, roughly ballpark is negative four point oh times ten to the negative fifteen joules. Okay. Oh, yeah, it'd have to be one volt for an electron volt. So, duh. Huh. All right. Okay. Now then. All right. So now, that's its change in its electric potential energy. It lost energy, but it gained, my question is, did it gain the same amount of kinetic energy? Yes. It should get, because energy is conserved, so therefore, whatever it's lost in potential, it's going to gain in kinetic. So, I can figure out the energy level of the uh, photons. What they wanted was, what's the energy of the photons, which was one-fifth of this guy? So the energy level that it hits, uh, the Ke of it is equal to 4.0 times 10 to the negative 15 joules. Alright? 4.0 times 10 to the negative 15 joules. And... Therefore, one-fifth of that, divide that by five, is what the photon. One photon equals one-fifth. That was given to us, Ke. So you just divide that by five. Now, a more interesting question might be, what's the velocity that those things slammed into there with? Can we figure out the velocity of that electron? What do we need to know? What? We need, we need to know its kinetic energy. What else? Its mass. That's all we need to know. Okay? That's all we need to know. So let's do that real quick. Let's figure out the velocity of the electron. The V of the E is equal to, uh, well, that's what I'm going to try and figure out. Okay? And we know this, that the kinetic energy is equal to, magnitude-wise, the uh, actually the opposite of the electric potential energy, of the EPE. Your book uses UE. I need to get UE. Sorry, I should use that. Same thing. Electric potential energy and UE are the same thing. So, Ke is equal to 4.0 times 10 to the negative 15 joules, which equals one half m v of the electron squared. And that's the mass of the electron. What's the mass of the electron? 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. So, oh my, this is going to be huge. So we get 2 Ke uh, divided by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. Hey, whenever you got a negative 31 in your denominator, you're, you're going to have a big number, all right? Wow. That's, that's 8, that's close to 8, which is pretty close to 9. You're going to have something times 10 to the 15th. I don't think that happened. Something's, i got to look something up here. You know why? Oh, that's V squared. Whew, I'm still good. We're still good. The, the problem that I was having with this number right here, this is equal to VE squared was it was going to be close to 10 to the 15th. Well, what did Einstein say about any velocity? 
can't go past the speed of light. And I would have had it, which is times 10, 3 times 10 to the 8th. I would have had this thing going faster than the speed of light. But then I remembered, ha, ah, thank goodness. Got to take the square root of both sides. And then it'll work out. I don't know what it is. That was my added problem to it. Okay. Oh, yeah, so it had the speed. Okay, there we go. You may go.